A very important part of Rigmore Hall is the cupola above the stage. Some people hate it, many people love it. I personally love it and the Wigmore Hall of course wouldn't be the Wigmore without it. Um, it was designed by Gerald Moira who worked with Thomas Culcutt, the architect, uh, on a number of buildings and projects and it was executed by Mr. Frank Lynn Jenkins. It's a very idealistic picture. Uh, the central figure is the soul of music and he's gazing up in rapture at the genius of harmony. This is re represented by a ball of fire with rays spreading out across the globe. This part of the picture is separated from the other figures by a tangled web of thorns. And if you, if you look at, at the image, you will, you'll see these tangled webs of thorns. Uh, the, the other figures represent man. On the left-hand side, you have a figure of a musician who is playing and, and staring rapturously up to heaven, looking for inspiration. And, and he is urged on by the figure behind him, which is love, holding roses. On the other side, you have the figure of a composer who, who is writing divine music. And behind him is, is the figure of Psyche. Psyche is the symbolical representation of the human soul who is urging the composer to, um, in, and inspiring the composer to write divine music. The idea is that man, that humanity is striving after perfection and, and striving after nature, but is separated by materialism, by this tangled web of thorns. The two figures on either side of the doorway are chanting notes cut from the divine source of all harmony. And you can see that, that the scroll of music is actually winding over towards them and they're actually performing this divine music. So. This place is all about the divinity of music and, and the sublime sounds and creating beauty, creating beautiful music.